One of the most useful things in high school algebra is that it shows you that instead of taking an expression like this and working it out and getting uh, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 times 2 plus 2 squared and then doing the next expression 3 plus 2 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 2 times 3 times 2 plus 2 squared and so on. What you can do instead is introduce a variable, like you might introduce a variable x which could take on any real number or even any complex number and you might then prove that x plus 2 all squared is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4, no matter what value x took. And this was a really useful thing to do, a really efficient thing to do, because it saved you having to do calculations like this lots and lots of different times. You could do them once and then you could substitute in whatever value x happened to have. We're going to do the same kind of thing in logic. We're going to develop a formal language for expressing propositions and the variables that we use will be called propositional variables and instead of the x here which could have been a real or a complex number our propositional variables will be able to be true or false and instead of formulas like this one or expressions like, like this one the formulas we will introduce in logic will be called well-formed formulas. So those are the subject of this video. So in our formal language, we need first of all to have variables. And the kind of variables we will use will be called propositional variables. And here's the definition of a propositional variable. A propositional variable is a variable which can take the value either true or false. Uh, if you happen to have done any computer programming before, then this is like the concept of a, a bool or a boolean variable. Traditionally, we use symbols like p, q, r, s, and so on for propositional variables. So as I say, we're going to develop a formal language for representing propositional for, for representing uh, propositions. And in that language, we need our variables, our propositional variables. We'll also need some brackets. But the really important thing is we also need logical connectives. So we have symbols that represent the logical connectives which we discussed in the previous video. Here are the symbols that we're going to use. We're going to use first of all this wedge symbol for the connective AND. We're going to use this V symbol for the connective OR. We're going to use this symbol for NOT and this double arrow for IMPLIES. Now this implies symbol especially is not universal. You'll often see people using a single arrow instead of implies. And also you will sometimes see people just using the words and or not or implies instead of these symbols. Especially when you do some of your online quizzes, you might have to type and or or, or not instead of using these symbols. Um, mainly the reason I've um, set the quizzes up to do that is because it's rather difficult to type these special symbols whereas it's very easy to type words like and or not. Okay, so let's think a little bit about um, about the what we're trying to do here which is to develop a formal language for expressing propositions. And this is a bit like natural languages like English. I mean in English you have a bunch of letters a, B, C, and so on. And some combinations of those letters make legitimate words. Uh, you can see lots of examples of that on this slide. But some, some combinations of letters don't make legitimate words. Like if somebody writes X, V, E, N, T, U, I, L, D, that's um, all of the things which make that up are legitimate English letters, but it doesn't make a meaningful English word. So we need to distinguish between the sequences of logical symbols and propositional variables and brackets which do make meaningful logical expressions, meaningful propositions, and ones which don't. And for us, meaningful, well-formed expressions will be called well-formed formulas. And on this slide, we're going to give a definition of a well-formed formula, but it's quite an unusual definition. It's a type of definition you're not, perhaps not familiar with called a recursive or an inductive definition. 
So here's the definition of a well-formed formula. It comes in two parts. And the first part is that any propositional variable on its own is a well-formed formula, WFF for short. The second part of the definition is split into four parts. And what it says is that if you have two well-formed formulas, phi and psi, then firstly, phi and symbol psi in brackets is a well-formed formula. Secondly, phi or symbol psi in brackets is a well-formed formula. Thirdly, phi implies symbol psi in brackets is a well-formed formula. And finally, the not symbol followed by phi is a well-formed formula. So let me stress that this definition completely describes what is and is not a well-formed formula. Something is a well-formed formula if and only if you can make it using these rules. Let's now look at some examples of well-formed formulas and things which are not well-formed formulas. So I've copied at the bottom of the screen here this definition on the previous slide of what is a well-formed formula. It's something which can be built using our two, two rules. So on this slide we will take um, P and Q and R as usual to be propositional variables and we're going to look at some examples of things which are well-formed formulas and things which are not well-formed formulas. So our first example here is just the propositional variable P and that is a well-formed formula, a green tick, it is a well-formed formula by rule 1. Right, rule 1 says that every propositional variable on its own is a well-formed formula. So this P on its own is a well-formed formula. Next, uh, next example here, so P implies symbol Q in brackets. It is a, uh, a well-formed formula. And the reason is that P is a well-formed formula by rule 1. Q is a well-formed formula by rule 1. And then rule 2.3 here says that if you have two well-formed formulas, phi and psi, then phi implies psi in brackets is a well-formed formula. So using rule 1 and rule 2.3, I get that P implies Q in brackets is a well-formed formula. Next example, not R. Again, this is a well-formed formula. And the reason that this is a well-formed formula is that, first of all, by rule 1, R on its own is a well-formed formula. And next, by rule 2.4, if you've got a well-formed formula phi and you stick a not symbol in front of it, then the result is again a well-formed formula. So not R is a well-formed formula. Uh, next example, more complicated example. Uh, again, this is a well-formed formula. And again, the reason it's a well-formed formula is because you can make it using our sets of rules for making well-formed formulas. So we already know that brackets P implies Q brackets is a well-formed formula. That was our second example. And now, so what was that? That worked by rule 1 and then rule 2.3. Now we can apply rule 2.2 to say that not R is a well-formed formula. That was our example here. P implies Q in brackets as a well-formed formula. That was our example two. And so by rule 2.2, this whole thing is a well-formed formula. Okay, again, similarly, I'm not going to write out the full justification this time, but again, this next one is a well-formed formula. And this time, the reason is that you can use, first of all, rule 2.2 to get that brackets Q or P is a well-formed formula. And then you can use rule 2.1 to get that brackets P and Q or P is a well-formed formula. Okay, next, however, this thing is not a well-formed formula. It's nearly a well-formed formula, but it's missing brackets. So let me stress once more, if you want a well-formed formula, you must follow these rules, and there is no set of rules which allow you to make this as a well-formed formula. Um, you can use, if you like, 
rule 1 that says P and Q on their own are well-formed formulas, and then you can use rule 2.1 to get that brackets, excuse me, rule 2.2 to get that brackets P or Q is a well-formed formula, but without the brackets, that is not a WFF. Uh, again, the next example is not a well-formed formula. There is no well-formed formula rule which allows you to produce this. Again, it's really close to being a well-formed formula if you had just another set of brackets, like if you had something like P or Q or R, that thing would be a well-formed formula. But there is no way of using the rules here to produce brackets P or Q or R. So it's not a well-formed formula. And again, for our last example, it's simply not a well-formed formula. Uh, there is no way to produce this weird-looking expression. And that's good because well-formed formulas are supposed to be things to which we can give a, a logical interpretation, an actual meaning. And there's no way to give a logical meaning to this ridiculous string of symbols, just like there's no way of giving a English meaning to the ridiculous string of letters I wrote on the previous slide. So one final thought before I finish. You might think, um, a fun thing to think about is how can you actually prove, like a really rigorous proof, how can you really prove that this last expression cannot be generated using my rules, or this expression, or this expression? How can you really prove that those things can't arise from the rules for generating well-formed formulas. But that's something for you to think about.